Praise the Lord and welcome again to the State of the Union broadcast. The union between Jesus and his bride, the church. And we are still about the business. The word of the Lord saying, tell my people to return to me. Tell my people to return to me. And just as we have done in the past couple of days, tell my people to return to me in my word. So our topic of the day for the past couple of days now has been return to the word of God. Tell my people to return to me <clears throat> in my word. Or if you like, tell my people to return to the provisions in my word, of my word, by my word, through my word. Now, for the sake of perhaps clarity or understanding, the word of God can be many things at the same time or different things at different times. The word of God can be a promise, like you give somebody your word. The word of God can be a prophecy, which is not exactly a promise, but a statement of something that is yet in the future. Just like a promise anyway. It's a future thing. But in the prophecy, it's not necessarily offering to do something for you in future. It's just a statement of something that will come to pass in the future. The word of God can also be instruction or a commandment, like a teaching. So when he wants to give you a new dimension of experience in him, he gives you the appropriate instruction, that is teaching, teaching, he gives you teaching. So God can change your level or if you like dimension of oppression by simply giving you a word to that effect. The word of God can be so many things at the same time. Now but let us bear in mind that God does all things by his word. God does all things by his word. I said now, when he wants to give you a new level or dimension of experience, he simply gives you either the instruction or teaching for it, or he just speaks the new existence and new experience into existence. He just speaks it into being. He just speaks it into being. Especially things like healing or deliverance. Be healed. He wants to give you a new experience away from disease and suffering. He just says be healed. And that, that changes your experience instantly. So God does whatever he wants to do. So, so sorry. So whatever God wants to do, he first speaks about it. He begins to, so when God begins to talk about his subject, Please be careful to note that he may have in mind that that topic is your new experience. So he's talking about it. When God begins to talk about something, that's the thing on his mind. He said, I will not do anything without first telling my servants the prophets. 
So whatever he says to the prophets, these are things on his mind that he wants to do, or he wants to see, or he wants to bring to pass. So God first speaks or talks about whatever he's going to do. Or he gives it as his word on the subject, like a teaching I said already. Or he simply speaks it as a promise. He just gives his word, like a promise. By this time tomorrow, a loaf of bread in Nigeria will be 200 naira. By this time tomorrow, a barrel of crude would be $50 per barrel. That's, I guess, almost half of the current price, I think. He just says it. How it comes to pass, that's not your problem. He just says it to you. So God does whatever he will do merely by saying it, by speaking it into existence. You can read it from Genesis chapter 1. What he chose to do, he just spoke about it. He just spoke it into existence. So when he says, tell my people to return to me in my word, one great possibility is that he wants to change your experience but he needs you to first of all get on the platform by which he does such things. So he says, come back to me in my word. Or come back to the word that I, I, I once gave you. Maybe because it is time for that thing to come to pass. Or he's ready now to bring that word into fruition in your life. So he starts to remind you of the word. He starts to draw attention to what he already spoke about. So now, since God does everything he will do by his word, then we need to understand different dimensions of possibilities with the word of God. We need to be aware of different levels or dimensions of possibilities with the word of God. For example, I'll give a couple because I don't have all day anyway. So I, I certainly can't go through the entire gamut of possibilities. So it says, for example, that the word of God is life. Not just that it is life, he gives life by his word. Or he makes alive like he quickens. So he quickens the dead back to life. One. Or he simply raises the dead back to life by speaking forth life into the dead person. Or concerning the dead circumstance. So you will see, for example, in Romans chapter 8, verse 11. He says, if the, spirit of, if the spirit that raised up Jesus dwells in you, he that raised up Jesus shall by that same spirit by which he raised Jesus quicken. Quicken means to give life to your mortal bodies. So that's a healing scripture right there. He will give life to your mortal body. Mortal in this case meaning diable or sick able. He will give life to either so it is raised back to life or give life to as per healing. But he says that his word is life. So in Proverbs 3, from verse 1, for example, we see, it says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Length of days and long life shall my word add to you. For length of days and long life shall my word add to you. Now the word of God can, can give life or add length of days to us in at least two different dimensions. One, he can simply speak long life into your life. And the other, he can bring long life into play in your life by teaching you about such things that bring long life. For example, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long. 
So the word of God, the word of God is life, gives life, brings life, and makes alive. That's one. The word of God is also light. So it says, for example, in Psalm 119 verse 105, he said, your word is a lamp unto my feet. It's a lamp unto my feet. So straight away we understand that the word of God gives direction. Lamp, light. So if you walk by the word, you will necessarily go in whatever direction the word of God is speaking of. It gives direction. But then in verse 131 of that same Psalm 119, it says that the entrance of your word not only gives life, uh, light, but it brings illumination to the simple. The simple is really a word for the foolish or the one that lacks understanding. So the word of God straight away can be understood as light and in that sense, in several dimensions. One, it can bring direction. It can bring illumination. It can bring understanding, insight, knowledge, instruction, counsel. So when God says, tell my people to return to me in my word. Now, in the sense of the word being light, as you begin to examine the word of God, you suddenly see, you are able to see better in the direction to go. Besides it just being plain advice or counsel, as we examine the Word of God, or as we make examining the Word of God a habit. Alright, let's look at this part of this scripture. Job 29 verse 6. 29 verse 6. Or is this 19 verse 6? It says, As I wash my steps with butter, the rock poured me out rivers of oil. As I washed my steps with butter, the rock poured me out rivers of oil. As I washed my steps with butter, we know from Proverbs 30, 31, that the churning of milk produces butter. Churning means to stir it, to stir, 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 stir. So it says, as I washed my steps with butter, or as I washed my steps with the word of God, that I have rolled over and rolled over and rolled over in my mind, which we do when we meditate on the word of God. It produces butter when we roll the word of God in our hearts. So the milk of the word becomes butter when we meditate on it. And butter is a richer and creamier form of milk. The word of God says. And I'm sure the people in that industry understand. So it says, as I wash my steps with the richer form of the word of God, which I got by meditation. He says the rock, and we understand that that rock is Jesus. He says the rock poured me out rivers of oil. So as he said, the word of God is light. Not just that it brings light, it is light. And being light, it is capable of illumination, of course, giving direction, understanding, insight, knowledge, instruction, counsel. And as we saw now, from Job 29, verse 6, as I washed my steps with butter, a richer form of the milk of the word of God, it says the rock, which is Jesus, poured me out rivers of oil. That is, the more I allow the word of God to be illumination and direction, ordering my steps, the heavier, the anointing of God upon my life or circumstance. Now, next one, the word of God also brings, or is in fact, 
the wisdom of God. And we are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 that Jesus that has been made wisdom unto us. Jesus, the word, has been made wisdom, the wisdom of God unto us. So when you go by the way of Jesus, when you go by the way of Jesus, the word of God, you are operating in the wisdom of God. And you can't fail. Tell my people to return to my word. Now the word of God also creates Yes, we know that what we now call the world, things that can be seen, were created from that which cannot be seen, which is the word of God. The entire first chapter of the book of Genesis tells us about how the world came to being. God simply spoke. But then Jesus, in, 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 in John chapter 6, he says, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And Jesus himself, not just that he is the word of God, he is God himself. So he says, the word that I speak to you is spirit and life. In other words, as the word of God comes forth, it takes the dimension of spirit and life. In other words, whatever the word speaks of, comes into being the moment it is spoken. It comes into being, albeit in the spirit. It comes into being. Now, if God wants to act alone, then that word will become manifest physically all by itself. Like God spoke Jesus into being with all those things he said, all those different times from different prophets, all through the ages, from Genesis chapter 3, all the way to his birth. But you know, sometimes God can, um, can, can bring us into the capacity of co-workers with him when we need to apply our faith to that which has been spoken. And once we do and do so correctly, that which was spoken in the Spirit comes into our tangible world and it becomes flesh. John 1 14. The word became flesh. Now God creates in that way. He simply speaks it and in the realm of the spirit it is done. But it becomes tangibly manifest when we cooperate with that word. So really all God needs is a man with faith or is a man of faith. He simply speaks things into existence. God creates by his word. God gives us a new experience that wasn't there yesterday by simply speaking about it. By speaking about it, he brings it into life. Now, of course, God comforts by his word. God builds up by his word. The more you let him teach you, the more you grow. He said, desire ye the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow. And then God also gives an inheritance, a portion or a place in the scheme of things, just by His word. You know, the apostle said in Acts chapter 20, verse 32, he said, Now I commend you to our God and to the word of His grace, which is able to give you, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. You begin to see why God says, tell my people to return to my word. There is nothing for which we have abandoned God in Christ that he couldn't give us just by the agency of his word, just by talking about it. But first we have to come back to his word so that we can come to terms with that which he has said concerning us so that we have something to hope and expect because he already said my thoughts to us you are of good not of evil to give you an expected end so he gives you the word so that that becomes your expectation then god has something to give you because it's just 
there's some expectation. Hmm. Need I also say that the word engenders faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We know that. But then in Psalm 119 verse 49, it says, the word that you have spoken to me has caused me to hope. So hope comes alive simply at the word of God. He said, the word that you have spoken to me has caused me to hope. And then in the very next verse, verse 20, he says that you have given me life by the word you spoke to me. You have given me life by the word you spoke to me. The word also brings healing. God says, tell my people to return to my word. Why? Sometimes he wants to give you something that you currently lack. For example, healing. For example, a change of experience. So in saying in Proverbs 3 verse 1, for example, my son, forsake not my law. He continues in verse 8, it shall be held to your navel and marrow to your bones. That speaks of healing, and, and I know my time is up. But God does everything by his word. So in asking us to return and return to his word, let us understand and appreciate that whatever may have caused us to turn, turn away from him, God is able to give it to us. God is able to restore just at his word. So he has sent me again seeking to create by his word to speak the words to you. Return to God. Return to the word of God. And then a sudden realization hit me now. If you are a preacher, then you need to hear the word. Return to the word of God before you begin to preach the philosophies of men. God bless you. I'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, and on the same subject of the possibilities with the word of God as we return to him.